Uh, uh, this is a paper about click prompts. Click CTR models are strong prompt generators for adapting language models to CTR prediction. Uh, this is a joint work of Apex Lab at Shanghai Jiateng University and the Huawei Neuroscience Lab. Uh, as depicted in the title, in this paper, we focus on the closed-through rate prediction, which aims to estimate the probability of a user's click towards a given target item in a certain context. And there are generally two paradigms for CTR prediction. The first one is traditional CTR models. They take as input the ID features as the uh, via the one-hot encoding, as shown in the uh, first equation. We can see that either the feature like uh, features like gender, female, or male will be converted into binary ID codes like one zero or zero one. These models like DFFM, DCN, they are good at capturing the collaborative signals and modeling the uh, feature interactions, but they suffer from the semantic information information loss. That is, all the useful semantic feature values are abandoned and thrown away, and they are all in binary codes. In other, in other hand, another paradigm is called PLM-based CDR models. They take as input the textual features via the hard prompt template as shown in the bottom of these slides. We can see that all the corresponding feature values will be filled into the underlined boxes. In this way, we can preserve the semantic meanings, meanings of the features, but uh, these models can fail to uh, lose the sight, the, lose the sight of field-wise collaborative signals. That is, for example, the user ID AX529. This, this should be a unified one feature ID for the model, but uh, during the language tokenization, it can be tokenized into A and X and 5 and 29. Uh, this is a four meaningless tokens for the language model to be understand. So uh, this might somehow hurt the final performance. Also, not to mention that the involvement of that language model can increase the inference overhead, which is uh, uh, impossible for the industrial applications. So we can see that these two different paradigms can form a mutual complementary re relationship and got their own advantages and disadvantages. So in this paper, we propose the click prompt framework, where we aim to combine these two different paradigms by regarding the CDR models as the soft prompt generators for PLMs. Uh, as we can see in this figure that uh, with the soft prompt vectors as a bridge, during the forward propagation, these collaborative knowledge denoted as the yellow arrows will be injected from the CDR models into the language models. And vice versa, during the backward for propagation, uh, the semantic knowledge denoted as the dashed purple line will then flow back from the language model into the CDR model. So in this way, we can uh, therefore construct and establish a uh, fine-grained alignment and interaction between these two kinds of different models and two different uh, data mod modalities. First, let's look at the uh, detailed model architecture design of our click model framework, uh, click prompt framework. Our framework is uh, actually model agnostic and uh, compatible for different CDR models and uh, language models. So here we omit the detailed inner structure of the uh, the click prompt framework mainly composed uh, three major components. The first component is called modality transformation, which is simple. For each tabular data sample incoming, we will convert it into ID modality and textual modality, as shown in the uh, uh, right side, uh, uh, in the in the bottom of them. We will convert it into ID modality via one hot encoding and textual features via are prompted, which it will be fed into the CDR model and language models, respectively. The second component is called prompt generation, uh, where we will fit the binary ID codes into the CDR model and get the final representation from the CTR model and fit it into the pink prompt generation layer. The prompt generation layer will output a set of independent, parallel, soft prompt vectors. Finally, the final uh, component is called the prompt fusion. The prompt fusion in the prompt fusion component, the previously generated soft prompts will serve as the prefix hidden states at each transformer layer of the language model. Unlike a uh, unlike these those traditional or common prompt tuning, they only feed the soft prompt at the input layer. We do this because we think that the uh, uh, the semantic information come from the textual side might be overwhelming. And if, if we only place the soft prompts as the input layer, 
the uh, the collaborative knowledge come from the left side might be vanished during the multi layer forward transform transform uh, transform transformer layer uh, propagation. After introducing the model architecture, now we come to the uh, learning strategy. The click prompt adopts the pre-training and fine-tune scheme. As for the pre-training stage, we design the prompt augmented mask language modeling, which is denoted as PAMLM. Uh, in this stage, we apply token masking on the textual features for language models while preserving the original ID features for CTR model. Uh, and the overall uh, the overall objective is simple. We want to recover the mask tokens. Uh, in this way, we can see that the language model have to recover the mask tokens not only based on the language context, but also they has to extract and incorporate the right answer embedded in the soft prompts. For example, if we uh, if we mask the feature uh, feature gender female in the text features. For the language model, if it uh, wants to recover the female feature value solely based on the text inputs only, it might be just a random guess since in the data set, male and female, the proportion might just be half-half. But the original ID features are not corrupted. So the, cement, uh, the soft prompts can somehow contain the important information about the gender information. So to make a better uh, token recovery, the language model has to look into the soft prompts and get the information out. That is the goal principle of our uh, PAMLM. After the pre-training stage, we come to the fine-tuning. Uh, during the fine-tuning, we will append a, a randomly initialized CTR head to make the downstream CTR prediction. We offer two different options. The first is fine-tune with PLM. Uh, this is simple. We can retain all the whole model architectures and uh, continue the supervised fine tuning. In this way, the performance could be good since the mutual interaction between these two models and two different uh, modalities are continued. But the inference is bad since we involve the language model for the final inference. So it can serve as the online model for, uh, for industrial applications. Therefore, we offer another option that is fine tune without PLM. Which where we so uh, we simply uh, abandon the language model and solely tune the CDR model for the downstream task. This works because during the uh, pre-training stage we have already got the semantic aware initialization for the CTR model, so it can improve the performance without introducing any inform uh, any additional inference overhead. Uh, here is the experiment. First, we investigate the overall performance of our clip prompt compared with two different type of baseline models, that is ID-based and PLM-based CDR models. As we can see that uh, CD, well, our proposed clip prompt can uh, surpass and outperform all these baselines under two different fine-tuning strategies, that is with or without PLMs, and, it achieves, uh, yeah, and they achieve the best and second best uh, results. Uh, to be noted that in, in this table, we adopt the Roberta, Roberta base as the PLM backbone and uh, use the DCNV2 as the CTR backbone. Then we also study the model compatibility of our click prompts. That is, we choose three different backbones of PLMs and also three different backbones of CTR models. They are DCNV2, AutoInt, DNN, and for language model, they are tiny birds. But, uh, Roberta base and Roberta large. For all this combination of different backbones, uh, our click prompts can uh, make the improvement. And the one thing to note is that although we can observe that as the size of the language model we involved increase, the performance can be better and better. However, the proportion that uh, we got the uh, performance improvements brought by the model size increasing is not proportion. That is, we suggest that uh, Roberta base might be a more appropriate and economic uh, choice for our clay prompt. That is, even, even though Roberta Large is good, but its training cost ex is actually very high, it may be not worth it. 
Another ablation is to emphasize the importance of our prompt strategy. That is, we have to insert our soft prompts into each layer of our transformer layer, not only in the input, input layer. And the reason is simple, and we have introduced the reason in our method part. That is, if we only, if the uh, soft prompt from the ID feature side only placed at the uh, input layer, it might be vanished and be overwhelmed by the textual features come from the right side. And we can see in the uh, table that, that uh, uh, this, this hypothesis is correct. Finally, we also investigated that why our uh, why the involvement of language model can contribute to the performance improvement of backbone CTR models. We sort all the data samples by the user or an item being long tail or not. And the long tail is we select the, uh, select the user according to their occurrence frequency in the data set. As we can see that once the user or item becomes long tail and low frequency, the improvements brought by the, our click, click prompt over the backbone models, DCNV2, will be much larger. And this validates our, uh, 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 our opinion that the, the involvement of PLM can help improve the capacity, capacity of CTR models uh, for long tail and cold start problems. Uh, here is the conclusion that we propose the high level idea of connecting ID based and text based models via soft prompt vectors. And we propose click prompt, also a new pre training objectives to establish the fine grained interaction between two modalities. Uh, that's all. Thanks.